my name is Ralph and welcome to the channel. It's my time, let's go. So today we're gonna to be working on my 81 shovel that I haven't had a chance to get at until now. I got it going initially and everything seemed to be fine, but now I go to start it up and it seems like I've got a problem with the, uh, with the Bendix drive. So I'm gonna to have to tear it apart and have a look and see what happened. I don't know, uh, I can't remember, I don't think I put a new Bendix in it. I may not have, but in any case, it's just kicking out. It's just kicking out. I try to start the bike and it goes ring, ring, and I'll show you. So it's definitely the Bendix drive misbehaving in there. Either the solenoid is not pulling it out, it could be that too. So I'm going to have to take it apart. I'm going to put my little unit on here and have a look at it and then I can see what exactly what's going on. So we'll go along and break all these loose. Uh, fortunately for me, I have a belt drive in here so I don't have to deal with the fluids. Now we got all the screws out. Take the shifter off. So we used the forward controls. I didn't even think about it. Okay, good. I'm gonna put our, our little cutout unit on here so that I'm able to look in here and see what's happening, whether the, uh, whether the solenoid is bringing it out or not but the quickest way to determine which is which. I don't think the cell is driving it out. Thinking I got troubles with the uh, with the solenoid here. Seems to have want to kick that out, and when it kicks out, it seems like the the gear is wanting to turn it over, but the solenoid is not returning. So I think we'll disconnect some things. Uh, see if I can get a solenoid that I can put on that and slide on there, and we'll take it from there. So now we get the solenoid disconnected here. I disconnected the battery, so there's no chance of lighten me up here. Probably should have one of those little units like I put on Gus's bike, the little levers. If don't make headway here, I may. Now we'll try to get in there and get them little 716s out of there. They're usually a joy. Be careful we don't lose the block behind. Getting the bottom one in there is going to be the 
the trick. So, now we've got a new solenoid put on it. Put my battery back up, I put my little piece on here so I can see what's going on. And we'll give her a quick turn over to see what happens. I know that my battery's no good. <laughs> Just the way things are. Uh, but it's, it is turning over. It's not kicking out like it was before, kicking in and out. So I know that the solenoid was the issue with it. So I'm glad to hear that. I'm probably gonna have to get a new battery by the looks of things. I put it on a trickle charger and tried to charge it up, but no dice, no dice. So we'll probably clean things up here a bit and then maybe we'll see if we can run it. So today I'm doing a little bit of work on my, my uh, 81 here and uh, I have found out that I've got a bad Bendix on here. So I've got to take the Bendix out and so we're going to have to remove some stuff. Also when I had it running I noticed there was a little bit of squeak in it. So just to be sure I'm going to take the clutch basket out and check things there. I'm expecting it's got a big fix kit in it and I'm just thinking that things might be dry from sitting there but I know when I'll take it out. So we've uh, taken our big ratchet and I put a jam bar in here and we've broken the nut loose. I hesitate to hit these with an impact driver off to do more damage to the uh, alternator. A lot of Loctite on this one because it was a belt drive with just the nut. I probably don't need to go through all this but I don't like to sell something unless you know the majority of things are done proper. wire brush all that out. Just got to take the tension off of the jam bar in there. Don't want to do that. I don't want to force that back on until I clean all those threads off. Just got to move the basket a hair. So I'm just going to try to take a wire brush here and clean off the threads as best I can right there. Gonna get some of that Loctite off. But we just got to put it on enough to release that jam bar. You can also take a measurement from here. Uh, I know I'm at an inch there, so that's why I didn't measure it. Make a little room for a clutch pack. That's going to come off easy, so I need my tool. I'm going to have to get the nut off. So now we got to get the little locks off of our nut before we can take it out. I'm going to have her locked up good in there. There we go. Oh, 
Okay, put a little tool on here. Make sure because our rod is in there that this puller has a hole in it so it can go over the rod and not press on it. pressure just enough to pull this out of the forks. I have done it before, but sometimes it just doesn't go easy. Uh, I don't know if I'll get lucky today or not with this. Sometimes you can remove it. Give me a little more room. enough to, to slide that right out and pull it out without having to take the tank move the tank over to get at the top center screw if you're lucky so we know that our Bendix drive is bad here from what we've seen so we've got a new Bendix drive so we're gonna take it in and uh, install it on the shaft and then try to reinstall back in Now we've put it in the soft jaws here to hang on to it and we got to remove the top nut. Now this top nut is opposite thread, it's left hand, so in order to loosen it we're going to be just like as if we were tightening it. That one wasn't terribly tight. off. Take our top piece off. And we'll take our Bendix drive off. Now down inside of here is a small C-clip and we've got to get that C-clip off to get this piece off so we can attach it to our new Bendix drive. So we've just put a little longer things on our needle nose here. Clip remover to take this this little clip off that's inside. Then we have our unit like this, and we're just gonna take that off. And it should snap down in there. You see there's a small groove around this here. So we just put that down on there and snap it in. Put our C-clip back down in there. We don't spread the C-clip any farther than we have to. There we go, we make sure that we can move it around in there, slide it around, and it's not bound up, but the lock is down in there. So, Put a little bit of grease on that. In there. Yep. 
That's what we want. Put the piece back on. Just sets in there like that. Little dab will do you. All right. And again, this is left hand thread, so. Tighten it to the left. There's no real torque to it, but it does have to be tight. I think I'll get my little brass jaws. That way I can grab it with those and lock that nut up. So as I said, there's no real torque spec on this nut, but you want to make sure that you've got it tight. You don't want it working its way off and then you have more troubles when you're with your starter if this starts to come loose on it. So there, we're all good. Put some grease on our spot in here and we'll go back out and see if we can uh, slide this in. So now we've got our unit on here and everything is free and it slides up and down like it should. We've greased the tip of it all up. And we're gonna see if we can get lucky now with the solenoid a little bit loose. We can pull that out. fingers should be able to get it back into the gear You can tell we're in place here because I can turn the starter assembly. So that all looks good. Now I'm just going to look at the basket and make sure that it's the big fix rollers are greased up good in it. They've been sitting for quite a while. So I'm not sure. So I'm going to take the time and take it apart and uh, re grease it. So get our belt back in place. We've always marked our belt for the direction of rotation. So it goes back in there the way it came off. So it took a little bit of dicking around. I had to pull the clutch basket out off of it a little bit. Get it in there. Making sure our clutch, clutch lock tab doesn't move on us. So yeah, we're going 50 to 60 pounds on this. There we go. And we'll have to do this one here. Around 100 pounds. 
Go 125, just to be sure. Okay. Just need to relieve the pressure and get our gem burn. And we have to bend our tabs over in there and lock them in. Those are locked. So, now we can start putting our clutch place back in. And watch where these say out on them. They have to be out. And we stagger them around so that not all the rattlers are in one place. There, stay at this one. set before right there. There we go. Okay, now we gotta try and get our solenoid back. So we kind of cheated there. So we pretty well got everything together now, and uh, I feel good about it. We got a new new solenoid on it, we got a new starter Bendix drive on it. So it should turn over without any grunting or spinning or groaning or whatever. I'd say we got her there. That'll take care of that. Now we just gotta wait till our new battery comes in, charge the new battery put in, and uh, then we can take it out for a ride. Another job done, just a little job, but took half the day. But now it's right and proper, and uh, the new owner won't have to worry about those kind of problems. All right. And the verdict is? Good. Yeah, yeah. Well, good. All in all. That's what happens when you first get it in. Yeah. That's what it's all about. That's right. Those are the things that you gotta do. Yeah. You should be good to go. Life is rough, happen to go for a ride. Oh, it's nice too. Yeah. It's nice out. Very, Very nice. nice. Yeah.